we've shown far, far too much respect for them. Against Paraguay, we didn't play particularly well in the early part of the game. The goal gave us a lift. Yeah. But you see, and we said at the time there, Hoddle is defending with everybody else. So therefore, when the ball goes out, the two players up front have got nobody at all, and, they just, and they're facing the wrong way for a start. So they have to try and get the ball down, and it's very difficult. I think we've got to risk Hoddle, leave him between the defence and the front players. Therefore, they'll be worried about him and staying back. And therefore, they'll have, they, he will give them problems, and it will, they'll have more space to play in. If we're just going to rely on a counter-attack, we'll wait and wait, and we might win 1-0. But on the other end, they might get a break when we're going to give them too much respect. Do you think perhaps it was right to do that for the first half and be a little more ambitious now, from now on? No, because I think we can defend well. I don't think we need uh, uh, Hoddle to defend in there. We can need him to defend just inside our own half with the front two, make it difficult for him. And then when it goes past him, he can wait there for, to spring out again and do damage because they're frightened of him. But as, as yet, uh, for that respect, we're not punishing them. Yeah. The fact is, though, I mean, Emlyn, uh, Argentina haven't really looked like scoring either, have they? Not really. Mar Maradona's done well. I mean, we all know what a great player he is, but I think that Bobby Robson's got a major part to play in it now at half-time, because the lads have, have... It hasn't been a great game. I mean, we've sat here, and as you've said, there hasn't been a lot of highlights that you can look back on and say, that was close, that was close. Now, he's got to go in, and he, he can say to the lads, you know, hey, we've done all right, nil-nil, we're in with a chance, we're not down in any way. As Terry so rightly said, you've, we've got to push Glenn Hoddle up a little bit further because we've got seven good defenders, seven, eight, in, including Peter Shilton, great defenders. And I think that we can push Glenn a little bit forward, as he's done in the two games where we've played very, very well, the Poland and the Paraguay game, push them forward. And if Glenn can start playing a little bit, getting a little bit more ball, playing balls up to the two front lads, then, yeah, we can beat because Argentina are nothing special. There was a little incident early on when uh, Peter Beardsley found himself with something of an opportunity um, simply because the goalkeeper uh, seemed to slip, which sort of evidences the fact that it the pitch is a bit tricky. It wasn't the first time that uh, people in the penalty area, in the Argentine penalty area, have slipped up as well. It must be fairly heavy there. But uh, Peter's done well. And it looked, I mean, we thought it had gone in. We thought it had gone in. I think you've got to give him top marks. He's had very little to do. And it was his first opportunity. He, he didn't have any doubts. He knew what he was going yeah. to do. As soon as he turned, right. he was going to go for it because he felt they were going to be light to do getting back yeah. onto the goal. I felt so. Yeah, he'd done, yeah. he done well there. And that's the only chance him and Lineker's hardly touched the ball at all. Right. Peter Reid's been one of the pluses, I suppose, of that first half. He's worked he's, hard, hasn't he? He started off, I don't know, we, we get a feeling that he's uh, been told to really attack the game. He was on the left and on the right because they don't feel as if he can go through 90 minutes. Don't worry about pacing yourself go for the game and perhaps he won't last more than about 60, 65 minutes if, if, if that. If that. He's had a knock and it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what, what, what they see did, at half time. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah, he did cop a one early on again, didn't yes, he? he down, did. Right down in the corner flag there, the lad's come across him and he's been clutching at his ankle again. Copped one. <laughs> he so. copped yeah. one, yeah. That's the football vernacular, of course, <laughs> with having taken a, he got an one. injury. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, he went out the game for five or ten minutes, but he's, he's come back into it again and he's, he's doing well. Now, Maradona's yeah. looking for some free kicks, isn't he, it seems to me. I, I don't know. I mean, he, you know, he's, he's earned he's, some, but he's looked for a few too. He but is exciting, Well, I think we've done the right thing that everyone says about putting a man on him. The trouble is when you play a man-to-man -man marker, when you, when you escape from him, you yeah. can't cover him and he can take your team shape all over the place. What they're doing Shape. is the nearest man is going to him and running him into our other men. And you see him run across the end. There was a great shot of him running across the field and he, he had to go faster and faster. And the faster he went, the less he could control the ball. Right. And therefore, going, he's yeah, looking now to, to dive. Well, and, and it's quite a, an in, interesting little thing is him with his free kicks against Shilton because Shilton, uh, without doing anything um, fantastic, he's taken two great crosses. He's Have taken two extreme crosses. I thought that, Shilton's given too much space to a left-hand post there. Um, and he goes for it, he shows him, and it's close whether he would have made it or not for well, me. Well, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have got to it if it had gone in the top corner, that, that's for sure. If it had gone in the top corner, he's, he's, he's got across well, and we've all turned around and said, is he going to, oh, you know, and we're glad it's gone the other side of the post at the end of the day. What do you reckon, Argentina's half on points? I think so, but as, as we've said before, it's not about points, it's about knockouts, and, yeah. uh, uh, and they will be a bit hesitant now of what to do, whether to... They, they, their manager will be saying, well, be careful, because they yeah. might counter-attack, and I think if we just draw Hoddle away from that, that will worry him even more, especially at the half-time, because they're not ready for that. Mm -hmm. And I think he could, if he can get hold of the ball and settle it and put these things and get the two front players spinning away into wide areas with these nice balls he can play in and spread them, make them stretch the team, 
uh, I think that uh, they will have problems. We, uh, but I feel we must make that gamble. Right. The prize more important than the football, said Barry Davis. I think he had it right there. <laughs> well, now, let me uh, tell you about our great summer of sport competition, for which the prizes are a trip to London and two seats for the World Heavyweight title fight at Wembley between Frank Bruno and Tim Witherspoon. That's on July the 19th. Or a visit to Edinburgh on August the 2nd for the final day of the Commonwealth Games, which includes the major athletics finals like the 1500 metres and the closing ceremony. So two terrific prizes, and to win, we want you to identify six goal scorers from previous World Cup finals. The first two you'll see in just a moment. The second two will be shown on Wednesday night during the second semi-final, which we hope England will be in, and repeated during the World Cup report on Thursday, Bob Wilson's show, and the final two during the World Cup final itself a week today. We're going to announce the winners on July the 6th at the Wimbledon men's singles final. I hope you're taking all this in. And I'll tell you how to enter after we've shown the first two goals. Remember, we want just the names of the goal scorers. Well, if you know, don't send anything in yet, but when you've seen all six goals over the next few days, send your answers on a postcard with the scorers A to F on the right-hand side and your name and address on the left-hand side, as you see there. And the address for entries is BBC Television's Great Summer of Sport Competition, Television Centre, Wood Lane, London W12 8QT. Have a look at that for a few seconds in case you've got the old pen out and you're busy noting it down. And we want your entries to reach us by Thursday, uh, July the 3rd, but please, uh, no cards yet until you've seen all six goals and name the scorers. Who do you think they were, Em? No, nope, don't, <laughs> don't tell us. Okay, let's move on and just for a moment reflect uh, on what happened in the World Cup late last night. The quality of the first half between Mexico and West Germany may have meant you didn't hang around for the outcome. Well, it was nil-nil after extra time, a bore draw, as some of the newspapers would have it. And so it went to penalties. The Germans here are leading 2-1. Nobody had missed yet. Fernando Kirate. The Mexican centre-back. Can he make it 2-2? Little check. And it hit the legs of Schumacher. And Mexico have missed a penalty. Well, the big defender didn't strike it too well. Schumacher was perhaps a little lucky, but he stopped it with his legs. It's West Germany 2, Mexico 1, and three more penalties to be taken by each nation. Lothar Mateus of Bayern Munich to face Larios. Larios went the right way and was within inches of making a stop. But Matthias tucked it into the bottom left-hand corner. And it's 3-1 to West Germany. Raoul Savin, the fullback who had such a good game. A soft penalty. Schumacher has saved. Pierre Litbarski, who came on as a substitute late in the second period of extra time. In anticipation, it would have appeared of a penalty shootout. Now to take the fourth penalty for West Germany. It's there. Litvarski's penalty puts West Germany in the semi-final meeting with the French. A repeat, remember, of four years ago when the West Germans were victorious. Well, that was a rotten match that went to penalties. Earlier, of course, we had that classic that went to penalties between France and Brazil. It was 1-1 after extra time. Here's the penalty sequence now. It's already at 3-3, and Brazil have already missed one. Going in, in a sense, 
It's Branko. Goal. It's 3-3, but France have one kick in hand. And I suppose this is the moment, really, for Michel Platini to take responsibility. for the winners and the misery for the losers. Are we in for penalties tonight? I don't know if we can stand it. Anyway, let's go back now uh, to the stadium, the Azteca Stadium, Jimmy Hill and Barry Davis. Well, I'm sure, Des, there are many people wondering precisely that, whether we're to see penalties again. And uh, I think uh, an opportunity as the players make their way out to make a couple of observations about that uh, penalty competition in Guadalajara. Should the referee have not sent off the goalkeeper and therefore forced the Brazilians to go through the penalty competition without a goalkeeper? And secondly, uh, Jimmy, if a penalty is taken at the end of 90 minutes in a normal game and the ball hits the post, the final whistle is blown. 